The Taiwanese crime drama The Victim's Game is genuinely so gory that I sometimes forget I'm watching TV. Season 1 introduced us to forensic investigator Feng Yi Chen and his daughter Xiaoming. To cut a long story short, they're estranged because when she was a child, Xiaoming ended up getting hurt from acid in Feng's home office, leaving him so worried that he ended up divorcing his wife and leaving the home immediately. Feng is considered weird at work because he's on the autism spectrum, but apart from a single mention of Asperger's in the first season, the show doesn't directly address this subject, but takes a more generic approach to telling Feng's story. Maybe this is a lost in translation situation or simply bad subtitling but the only word we see used to describe the man is weirdo in the process of solving a terrifying serial suicide murder feng meets a journalist hai in who starts to help him solve the case because she wants to write a big fancy piece on it in my predictions for the second season i guessed we'd see some romantic attraction between these two characters and that's exactly what we got however hai in feng and xiao meng are far from a happy family Let's dive into the ending of season 2 to understand if this changes or not. In the final episode of the Victims Game season 2, we learn that the forensic investigator working on this case was Min Chun, Chia Ying's mother. She had reconstructive surgery to look like a new person, changed her identity, and started working for the police to find out what really happened with her daughter's case. Feng realizes that the only man who tried to understand him just a little, Mr. Lin, was actually a fraud. because at the end of the day to cover up something his son did he gave up on all his morals and ruined Xia Ying's reputation in the final episode Xiao Meng and Hai go in search of Yi Jin in the forest in the meantime Feng shows Min Chun that her daughter brought her father's things to the place of rebirths because she believed everyone needed a second chance Min Chun is immediately furious at the prospect of her daughter wanting her father again Throughout Chia Ying's childhood, her mother pushed the idea that they escaped her father and were on their own because she was afraid of losing her daughter. While Chia Ying's father was abusive to his wife, the little girl saw her mother kill him at a very young age and decided to hide the truth to protect her mother and stay with her all her life. However, I suppose the madness of killing the man got to Min Chun's head, and she started treating her daughter in a paranoid way. which pushed the girl away during her teenage years. When the kids finally went on their rebellious trip, Chia Ying tried to talk to her mother, but she told her never to return home if she wanted to be with her father, since she'd always liked him more. By this, we understand that Min Chun had been guilty this whole time of essentially sending her daughter to her death. If only she hadn't said those harsh words to the girl who had kept her secret all these years, Chia Ying would have never stayed as long as she did, and all those kids would have been happy to date. Feng reveals the truth about Chia Ying knowing about her father's death, but Min Chun doesn't want to believe them. She ends up shooting him, but by the time she can shoot a second time, Xiao Meng and Hai In show up. Xiao Meng convinces Min Chun that she's not a bad person and that she's made some genuine mistakes, but she doesn't have to kill her father because all he did was help her. At the last moment, Min Chun holds Xiao Meng at gunpoint and takes her away, leaving Hai In to look after Feng. It is Xiao Meng who then tells Min Chun that her daughter didn't want her abusive father to be reborn again, but she simply wanted to leave her past behind and return to a better life with her mother. It's like Min Chun is finally enlightened by her daughter's feelings, leading to her wanting to shoot herself. While she aims the gun at her head and we hear a gunshot, we get a scene of Min Chun and Chia Ying meeting again at the place of rebirth. It's a moment of closure for the mother. who finally knows that her daughter never hated her but she went through this massive ordeal out of her own guilt in actuality feng managed to nudge her hand away in time to stop her from shooting herself saving her life and successfully sending her to prison in the video where min chun is torturing feng he confesses that he was a weirdo and trusted lin because he was the only person to ever acknowledge him and try to understand how he worked Xiao Meng and Hai In hear this and realize that they've never actually tried to understand Yi Jin's point of view, but simply thought he didn't know how to share his feelings and left it at that. By the end of the second season, in the meantime, Hai In becomes the CEO of Seven Leaves, and Yi Jin and her finally have a conversation. It seems all is well between them. Xiao Meng gives Hao's father an album of their pictures where he dressed as a girl. She's finally found closure regarding being the only one left behind in the suicide ordeal and doesn't feel guilty about being alive anymore. Father and daughter finally visit the beach that holds so much meaning for them and start to seem like a genuine family for the first time. They meet each other halfway, both trying to make the other comfortable. I suppose working together on a murder case and almost getting killed could do that to people, no? But while we get a happy ending for Yi Jin, who I've come to like very much, There's more to the victim's game. At the end of season 2, in a post-credit scene, we get a small clip of him meeting up with a woman, all dressed in white, looking like a rich CEO. He apologizes to her for taking so long to get her out of prison, but apparently Lin made it really hard for him. After Lin's death, 
Chang immediately took up the opportunity to work on the cold case and tarnish the man's name. Now the woman tells him he's worked hard and he gives her a deep bow, sending her off to what we can only imagine is her big mansion. But simultaneously, Chang reveals in a voiceover that he was the witness of a case 30 years ago at age 6, another cold case that he is determined to reopen. We can imagine this case has something to do with the woman Chang met at the prison. She must have been falsely accused or Chang must think so at least. Additionally, there's a ring that Chang has been wearing throughout the season, and he hands an identical ring to the woman. I'm not sure if it's the same one or looks like it, but this seems they're part of some sort of a big organization, and there's possibly someone else behind Chang. Additionally, there's a mention of a chairwoman in the series by Lin's son, Ming Cheng. So I think this woman could be called a chairwoman, and she may be Lin's wife. But take everything I say with a grain of salt, because I may be joining up invisible dots at this point. One thing is for sure though, Chang is determined to make a difference. In the meantime, we can expect to see more development in Yi Jian's relationship with his daughter as well as his girlfriend. After season 1, I was certain we would see a romantic relationship between Hai Yin and Yi Jian, and while my prediction did come true, we don't really see a change in the way they behave around each other. What I can hope for is for these two characters to actually address Yi Jian's autism and for the show to delve more into that aspect of his character. At the same time, We can imagine another team up between Yi Jian and his ex-boss and new friend Xiao Cheng Quan. At the end of the show, he's the one who sees what goes on between Prosecutor Chang and the mystery woman. So we can surely imagine that he has plans to figure out his deal. Alternatively, we can imagine he has something to hide too. Only time will tell though. What are your theories for season 3? Let us know in the comments below.